Hello students, welcome back to the course on organizational behavior, individual dynamics in organization. So we started with one of the most interesting aspects we see across organization, which is creativity. Now today, we'll look into the different stages of individual creativity. I'm Dr. Abraham Sir Isaac. I'm an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So let's look into today's theme. Creative potential includes the persistence of trying out more ideas, whereas less creative people give up sooner. So if you want to have a clear understanding of creativity, please understand that the functional word in that would be persistence. Persistence is what makes it critical. Persistence is what makes creativity sometimes unachievable because many a time people tend to start with great fervor, great motivation, great enthusiasm, but somewhere down the line they lose the fist. They, 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 they just lose the steam. They actually you know, come back and uh, lament that this is not a cup of tea for me. So on that note, we'll start today's lecture. Let's understand again what creativity is from a more of a social perspective. So when we are looking into the different attributes of creativity, the first and the foremost understanding one should have is creativity is all about development of original ideas. In the last lecture, we had discussed this and if you recollect that, we have clearly understood that creativity is not about bringing something old. It is all about bringing something new. Maybe it could be in your workplace, it could be with respect to the product you are designing, it could be with respect to the product uh, you are developing, manufacturing, or it could be with respect to a service you are entering, a systematic upgrade of the service. All these aspects are essentially new. And this, the newness or the novelty is what actually makes creativity the most vital factor, the most sought after factor or sought after quality in an organization. So when you are looking into uh, creativity, the first and the foremost understanding you should have is that it is nothing but development of original ideas. Now, when you are looking into creativity specifically, you have to also understand that you are going to make a socially recognized contribution. Now, sometimes there are individuals whom you feel in the organization, they are very creative. They are, they are much ahead of you. Sometimes you have a personal judgment about them that they are much ahead of you or much above you in terms of creativity. But seldom we see that their name appearing anywhere in, in terms of when it comes to the recognition part of a creative product or a creative service delivery or a creative improvisation, anything. This is mainly because there should be a clear socially recognized contribution associated when it comes to creativity. If the entire process of creativity, I've already mentioned that in OBM, organizational behavior management, creativity is generally observed not as a process, but it is observed more as an outcome, as a result. This is the, the key aspect why creativity becomes essential or becomes the sort of the factor in the organization. The third factor would be we rely on creativity to find problems, identify alternatives and to implement solutions. So when you are actually looking into creativity as just way to get famous in your organization or just to you know stand out of the crowd or make yourself pamper that you are the most creative person in the organization, it does not serve the purpose. Creativity comes to significance or it becomes significant only when you identify a problem, a problem which cannot be solved by the actual traditional conventional methods. You bring out a new idea, the new ideation is followed by a good implementation and that implementation essentially solves the problem. This set of process, this entire set of process will actually lead you 
to understand what specifically creativity is or this will qualify essentially as a creative idea or a creativity in general. So please make a note of it that you might have seen individuals, you might have personal incidences or personal experiences that these individual or X or Y, let's say any name in your organization, he might or she might be more creative than you. You might have a personal understanding, a personal analysis, but please note that if you are not able to identify a problem in the organization, bring out solution to that, implement that to overcome that, then it is not creativity. The fourth point would be, it is also an integral part of the decision making that is about to happen. So when you are looking into creativity in general, one important aspect is that it need not be only an idea generation process, it should also be an integral part of the decision making. Let us say till point number three, you are able to bring out the solution to the peculiar problem which otherwise nobody was able to decipher or even solve or attempt to solve. You have been the uh, you know blue eyed baby of your particular boss that you brought out the problem, brought out the solution to that particular problem, a very creative solution. But if you cannot go one step ahead and if you are not in a position to actually or if that idea is not in a position to command as a or translate as a solution and convert itself as a decision within the organizational setup, then there is no creativity that is happening. So this general understanding should be there when you are looking into, when you are studying creativity from the OBM angle. Otherwise creativity might have a slight difference because what I have observed here is that when you are looking into OBM, it is not a process merely, it is more of a result orientation that takes the front seat. Now let us look into the, the main aspect of today's class which are the stages of creativity. So when you are looking into the stages specifically, the stages of creativity as explained by the social psychologist Graham Wallace given in the 20s in, is relevant and used to understand creativity even till date. So that is why I am using this in addition to the first four stages given by him. A fifth stage is also uh, important, it has also found relevance in the research literature. So when you are looking into the different stages, what Graham Wallace put forward was the first one would be preparation. The second would be incubation, third would be insight, fourth would be verification. There is also an additional stage of implementation because this was the point I tried to underscore in the earlier discussion today. When we are talking about creativity, when we are actually looking into creativity, if the implementation part is not there. Sometimes what happens is that we feel that the organization has taken your idea and will implement that. This is a, 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 an assurance you get from the higher management. But sometimes down the line you feel that those files or those uh, you know prospective creative ideas never found the limelight. They never came to light and it, it has never been uh, you know taken to uh, implementation stage. So that would be very difficult in actually when we cannot actually define them as creativity. So implementation happens to be or has found out or is emerging as a significant stage in creativity. So that is where uh, when, when Wallace stopped with the, the four stage, there is a fifth stage that is equally relevant especially in the, in the realm of OBM and that is implementation. So when we look into these stages particularly the preparation phase, the first stage, the preparation phase is all about the person's or the team's effort to acquire knowledge and skills regarding the problem or the opportunity. You cannot have a, a go ahead or you cannot have a path ahead if you do not know what exactly the problem is and how it could be understood. Preparation involves developing a clear understanding of what one is trying to achieve. So this understanding becomes vital, this understanding becomes critical because if you do not know what you are trying to solve, you are not in a position even to understand and acknowledge the problem that is existing, you are not doing uh, the right thing when it comes to creativity. It has to be done 
through a novel solution again and again i try to underline this word it is a new solution that has to come up not the old one or not the the modified one which resembles the old one it should be a novel solution and then actively studying information seemingly related to the topic when you look into the second phase particularly incubation it is more of a period of a reflective thought it is more of a period of reflective thought where you have understood the problem you have understood the the criticality of the problem you have understood what are the different dimensions of the problem now you are trying to reflect on that particular problem so solution might not come just like that you have to understand the different dimensions of the problem let's let's take a real time example in terms of organization you are working on a particular product delivery and Uh, your client is expecting something but there is some other add-ons that your client has actually asked you for the that becomes or that is translated into a problem now understanding the actual requirements that your client has placed over and above the actual deliverables would be the understanding of the problem the first phase now when it comes to incubation you have to actually reflect with the available sources is it possible for me to deliver the updates or deliver the add-ons is it possible for me to improve on the design with the available resources so this is where incubation becomes critical this is where reflection on the particular problem becomes vital this is where actually you try to understand the problem in a deeper sense when you look into incubation the problem is put aside the problem is put aside but our mind is still working on it in the background now this is what makes the reflection more deep and more powerful the important condition here is to maintain a low level of awareness by frequently revisiting the problem sometimes what we do is in actually understanding the problem we generally fail to reflect that problem we we see that okay i have understood the problem the moment you read it sometimes there are things which are said between the lines sometimes there are different dimensions which were not actually codified or not actually explicitly mentioned in the problem sometimes you know you must have seen that let's take an example you work as an as an, an interior architect in in a real estate uh, realm so you are actually doing something a top notch higher a notch higher than what you are client was expecting now this was not communicated explicitly but some or the other way you try to understand you try to navigate through the expectations of your particular client and based on that you tend to understand that he or she needed or would have appreciate would appreciate if you go a notch higher so this is what makes you a better performer in your job you take any field you are working in in your organization if you have an interface with your manager or if you have you have an interface with your organization the customer the client please understand navigating through their expectations reflecting through those expectations will make you better informed will make you understand the problem more clearly and this is what makes you vital in terms of being creative in terms of being uh, nurturing your creative potential the third stage would be insight or illumination and when you look into the insight and illumination the experience of suddenly becoming aware of the unique idea this is where the eureka moment comes to you okay i have understood the problem it has taken me some time no doubt about it but i have also reflected on the problem now i am having a clear grip over the problem now this is where the insight strikes this is where the eureka moment comes in where you actually find out that you have a unique idea that is approaching you these bits of inspiration are fleeting and can be quickly lost if not documented so moment there you know you might have observed within the organization you are working and this eureka moment trust me it does not happen like that it's not a miracle specifically it's years of job experience you have seen this that is actually guiding you or that has given you the 
trigger of eureka so whatever happens the eureka moment has happened but many a time you will also agree with me that you were a bit lethargic bit lazy in noting down what was the outcome or what was that idea and it phases out it happens that at a later stage you try to recollect that but it does not come to you so please note that when such a miracle happens when such a eureka moment happens to you please make it a point that you note it down flickering insightful ideas can come to the individuals at any point in time irrespective of one scheduled time of work so it could be anywhere it could be at any time at any point in life it can come to you so this is the third stage of creativity when it comes to the next stage it is more about verification it is more about validation insights usefulness still requires verification through detailed logical evaluation so experimentation is there and further creative insight is developed so verification is labeled as the final stage of creativity because as i said initially we started with four stages it is really the beginning of a long process of creative decision making so you tend to see that you have got to a conclusion but this is where you have to start the implementation process you have to think about the coming factors or the or the upcoming issues or the upcoming consequences of your particular solution so this is just the beginning and not the end so this lead towards the development of an innovative product or service no doubt about it but again as i said it is just the beginning and not the end another important stage that was added as i tried to underscore it was the implementation the creative ideas and and its execution has to come together it cannot happen that these two are mutually exclusive the creative idea and there should be a a clear execution or implementation associated with that and if they are not inclusive if they are standing as mutually exclusive then your creative potential is not valued it is always undermined because of that a person puts their creativity to use only when the actual implementation happens so this is this emerges as one of the most important stage in the creativity process a final product is created which is usable by others let me extend this a final service is created a final uh, whatever uh, improvisation you are working on a final version is created of that so this are the the different stages of uh creativity so when you look into creativity it happens not in a go it happens systematically over the different stages which we have understood and that makes that makes creativity more intriguing that makes creativity more systemic and systematic so looking into uh characteristics of creative people let's summarize them as intelligence to synthesize information no doubt about it you are a creative person only if you have the ability to synthesize information information you are living in an era of information information overload is what exactly is happening if you are incapable to synthesize the information that is coming to you actually try to filter out the information which is not useful to you and make use of the useful information synthesize out information analyze ideas and apply their ideas that is the first and foremost characteristic of the creative people second and needless to say persistence which i have already mentioned in my previous class to seek out these ideas through trial and error in the face of resistance because you are a person whom here is where we come to the theme of the lecture also you are a creative person so there might be obvious uh, barriers obvious opposition to your ideas because there might be a set of people who might not be interested in actually giving you uh you know an upper hand or giving you the right position what you actually deserve there might be issues of professional jealousy there might be problems of personal jealousy so all these aspects would actually demand warrant a lot of persistence from creative people sufficient knowledge and experience on the subject is a must let's look into this from a different angle you are let's say a uh, uh, an expert in some field of biotech you are working on gm crops 
you are a scientist working on GM crops. Now, somebody comes to you and is asking about, let's say, how to launch a rocket or maybe uh, working on or asking you some doubts about the missile systems, then it is very difficult uh, permutation that's happening. So, you to show your creativity, the first and the foremost thing is it should be in your domain. And what do you mean by in your domain is that you should have the sufficient subject knowledge. If you don't have the subject knowledge, whatever creative ideas you put forward might be half-baked because you do not have seen or you have not seen the uh, entirety of the problems, the, the scale or the magnitude which the problem can take. So that is where the sufficient knowledge of or the experience of the subject is vital. A cluster of personality traits and values that, that support an independent imagination is also vital when it comes to characteristic of uh, creative people. You need to have a personality trait. In the previous class, I have actually tried to underscore that there is one personality trait like openness which is vital when it comes to creativity and certain values that support an independent imagination and an independent imagination is inconspicuously the precursor, the antecedent towards creativity. Now let's look into a particular example, a particular case of the Nottingham Spurk Design Associates Incorporated where we try to understand it as an example of creative environment. I've taken it from the textbook. You can obviously refer to that. You might say that creativity is a religious experience at Nottingham Spurk Design Associates. A few years ago, the industrial design company moved into an old church in Cleveland's University Park area. Perched atop an escarpment on five acres of property, the 20s octagon-shaped limestone building looks like a Roman temple more. Inside employees work in a large rotunda below a domed ceiling supported by 20 columns. Symbols of the original church remain, including a choir, loft and soaring pipe organ. You can't help but walk in here and say, I want to create something new, says John Nottingham, who confounded Nottingham Spurk with John Spurk three decades ago. Along with having an inspiring church building, Nottingham Spurk supports creativity through its risk-tolerant learning orientation culture. We stick our necks out, says Nottingham. If we fail, we go down the wrong path. We dust ourselves off and go the other way. So this is the spirit I would try to underline here. This is the understanding you should take away from this particular case. We understand that's innovation. The confounders and their 70 employees also discover ideas by looking around store shelves. We are trying to figure out what consumers will want two years down the road, explains Perk. The future-oriented uh, approach is what makes them stand out. We look and see what's not there, Nottingham adds. We literally visualize an innovation sitting on the shelf next to the competition at a price point. These activities produce sparks of insight, but they are only the starting point in the creative process. Anyone can have a good idea, says Nottingham. The difficult thing is to get it to market. You have got to make the idea work and prove its feasibility as a product. To transform ideas to profitable products, Nottingham Spurk forms teams of up to 10 employees who hold two types of meetings. So in the first meeting, called as a diverging session, team members brainstorm ideas. So this is the, the basic emergence of creativity in the entire case. We start with a creative session, people from our team that can complement each other and we come up with as many ideas as you can, says Nottingham. These ideas are documented as scribbles and sketches on slips of paper, up to 100 of them plaster the walls by the end of the session. In the second round of meetings called the converging sessions, we have the diverging sessions as well as the converging sessions. Each idea is systematically evaluated by the team. I pass around the note cards, each with a word or phrase on it that says, who cares, nice or wow? Nottingham explains. The person who introduced an idea can explain it further and then each team member judges the idea by selecting one of the three cards. If everyone holds up a wow card, you know you have got something. So that's the outcome, says Nottingham. Those who cares ideas are tossed out. Some of the nice ideas are developed further by an idea champion. For example, the swivel straight one minute Christmas tree stand 
received mainly nice ratings when it was first proposed. But co-workers gave it wow ratings after Nottingham Spurk designer Craig Saunders refined it further. Almost 1 million swivel straight stands were sold in the product's first five years on the market. Diverging and converging sessions are complemented by focus group meetings and client feedback to improve pro prototypes. Nottingham Spurks is redesigned of the round metal paint can, which has changed little over the past century, is a case in point. Employees knew from experience the frustration of working with traditional paint cans. We couldn't think of another consumer product that you need a screwdriver to open and a hammer to close. So that was a design development that they had, says Craig Saunders. So Saunders and his co-workers created a paint can with a twist top and built-in no drip pour spout. So this is classy. This is what the improvisation or the creativity has brought in as a product output. When shown an early prototype, potential users claimed the container wouldn't stack well in warehouses and stores. So the revised prototype was made wider and more stackable. Next users were concerned that the plastic container would break if it was dropped. So we took a bunch of them up on ladders and dropped them, says Nottingham. They bounced. This feedback made the twist and pour paint can an instant success. Sherwin Williams tripled sales of this Dutch boy paint in the first six months thanks to its creative work environment and innovation process. Nottingham Spurg has registered close to 500 patents and helped clients achieve more than 30 billion USD sales over the past three decades. Its most visible innovations include the Crest Spin Brush, Invocare Corp, Wheelchair Swiffer Sweep, per whack, wide oval shaped anti-perspirant containers, MRI scanner design and the twist and pour paint can obviously. So what we understand with the case is that they take the creativity as a serious business. They take creativity as a serious process. You must have observed about the converging sessions, the diverging sessions. So when it comes to creativity, please understand the takeaway from, for you in this lecture should be that creativity is not a simple process. It is not a simple miracle that happens to you because you are, uh, because of your genes or you are uh, inherited something like that. No, it is a stage by stage process and it happens through your experience. A lot of this happens because of your experience with a particular job. Again, please remember, if you are in a different domain and somebody wants you or uh, somebody is asking you to work on a particular domain, you might not be that proficient in working there or you might not be that proficient in bringing creative ideas there. So somebody who is working again in, in a field of biotech might not be proficient in bringing a creative idea in rocket science. Those things have happened, but it is very rare. So please try to understand that creativity happens to be a stage-wise process. We have seen what are the stages, but that said, the most important stage as concerned with OBM, organizational behavior management, or when it comes to the field of OBM specifically, is the implementation. If the process is not implemented, if the creative idea is not implemented, you are not going to get a creative output. You cannot term yourself it as, as, as a creative idea. You cannot term yourself as a creative person. On that note, we'll end today's lecture. See you in the next class with more insights into creativity. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.